Hello everyone, so today I am here to actually kind of start a new series on my channel and that is, I I am acknowledging right now, I took this idea from Books and Lala's three thriller reviews, I am going to be doing three classic reviews um, where basically I'm going, I'm just reading a bunch of classics recently and people always ask for full reviews on those books and I have expressed my feelings about doing single book book reviews like everywhere on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all that. So I was kind of like how can I give these reviews that people want without doing single book book reviews? So I was kind of like three classic reviews all together. So we're going to be reviewing the three classics that I read in May. Actually I read more than three classics in May but I just felt like three was a good number to go for for these videos. So the first three classics I read in May. So to begin with we're going to talk about Perfume by Patrick Suskin. Some people might say this isn't a classic. I consider it a modern classic. It was published in... 1986, but it is also considered one of those books that I have heard so many people from Europe say that like they have to read in high school and stuff, which I find really interesting. Uh, but I feel like this has definitely become a modern classic. So that's why it's here. Sorry for anyone who's like gonna scream at me saying it's not a classic. It's a classic to me. <laughs> But yeah, so Perfume. This is a book that I've actually had recommended to me multiple, multiple times because I love weird books. Most people know that. I love my weird books. I love just... Get, the weirder the better, basically. And this one did not disappoint. This is such a strange book. So basically, we I also... Two books I'm going to t be talking about today are French. And I cannot pronounce French so I am so sorry for butchering every single word on about this book but um also I do find it interesting Patrick Siskin that's obviously a German name but he writes about France um so yeah this book takes place in the slums of 18th century Paris and we follow Grenouille which means frog which I find very interesting in French Grenouille who is a guy a baby who's born to this woman and it has a lot to do like at the very beginning a lot a lot of descriptions of like the slums of Paris that he's born into and everything and basically he is born without a scent like there is this whole kind of thing that happens with um his mom gets like taken away into custody for like neglect <laughs> and he he is taken in by like a nun or like a wet nurse or something and she like freaks the hell out because she's like he doesn't smell like anything like babies smell like something. But Grenouille was born without a scent at all. He does not smell like anything and basically he's only taken in by a monk because monks are like we don't know what babies are like. We don't know anything that's weird about this child um, and he grows up and he's just very very strange right from the get-go. He doesn't really talk very much and when he does talk he learns very very slowly so it seems like kind of something's wrong with him for a while but then he kind of finds a passion in life which is sense because while he does not have a smell he has an incredibly like powerful sense of smell and at first it was all these horrible smells because he lives in Paris which is obviously a city which smells disgusting and so it's all of these really really horrible scents and then he finds a person who smells amazing and it kind of sets off this chain of events where he wants to become a perfumer and he goes and apprentices with a couple of different people to learn how to make perfumes to be able to make this perfect scent that he smelled on this girl when he was a child. I will say that this book had a couple of slow parts which were mostly when he was kind of learning how to do the perfume stuff like the actual like concept behind it and at first it was really interesting because it was like wow I have no clue how perfumes are made especially back in 18th century Paris. I don't know if it's any different today I'm assuming it is but it was an interesting process at first but he does it a couple of times and it kind of got a little boring but as the tagline says, perfume, the story of a murderer, Grenouille does become a murderer because he starts murdering people to be able to achieve this scent that he is striving towards. The ending of this book is insane. It might be one of my favorite endings of a book. I loved it. My boyfriend thought it was very nihilistic, which I do agree with. It is very nihilistic. Um, and there is some heavy commentary on 
religion um if you don't want to read it's not like bashing religion in my personal opinion it's definitely making some heavy commentary on a jesus figure and god but it's not like outwardly being like religion sucks i thought it was pretty interesting what this author was doing with this and the end like the very last couple of pages i just I literally read those and I was like, of course, of course that's how it ends. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. And I read it as just such a weird kind of situation. And like, again, kind of like how people were recommending it to me. If you have similar tastes to me, I definitely recommend this book because it is so strange. It is so weird. I have no clue how this man managed to come up with this scenario. It is just so unique and so weird. Um, there are some amazing passages too. He's a really really talented writer and all of the different things that he kind of sets up throughout and some really gruesome descriptions and also some really beautiful ones. This is my boyfriend's book which is why I did not annotate it but if it was my book I would have for sure um but yeah this book was incredible I ended up giving around a 4.75 out of 5 star because there were a couple of those boring bits kind of thrown in there but overall it was so entertaining it's a pretty short book it's just barely over 200 uh it's a little over 200 pages it's like it's about 250 and this character of Grenoui is just such an interesting character to read from because we read from his point of view quite a bit um but we also read from like quite a few other point of views like the people who take him on as an apprentice in perfuming and everything and actually I believe this is written yeah this is written in third person so we're never fully in Grenoui's head which I think makes it even more interesting I think it could have been a really cool book to be in his head but it's also like how does one even write from that perspective kind of thing um but i did end up really really enjoying this i thought it was so interesting the kind of murder mystery about it is really fun i seem to just enjoy like murder mystery thrillers that we follow the murderer i have discovered this about myself i really like a couple of japanese and korean um murder mysteries because we are reading from the murderer and that just seems to be what I enjoy so much more. Like, I don't care about the actual, like, oh, who done it? Like, I like knowing who did it and seeing how they're gonna get out of it. But basically, the plot of this is really, really unique. We follow such an interesting character that I've definitely never read from before. The writing is awesome. The ending is so freaking weird and amazing. And overall, I just really, really enjoyed this book. I really thought it was a good book to kind of kick off my classics reading too, because this is very accessible. Like I said, it is more of a modern classic than a classic. So it's very accessible and very easy to read and get into. And it definitely kind of kicked off my like, I want to read more. So I really enjoyed this. I hope more people pick it up. I know a lot of people from Europe have to read this and I've been scarred in the sense of like so many Americans like you know we like hate Catcher on the Rye or like The Scarlet Letter because we're forced to read it. Maybe try to pick it up as an adult if you've already read it and really disliked it as a kid um, because I thought it was really really fun. Um, I thought it was really really fun and really interesting. I would love to read this in a class though and see like the analysis behind it because I don't know much about France or anything so I was kind of like a lot of the French stuff and like French politics and like stuff like that was going over my head so I didn't really understand it but what I did understand this book it was really really fun really weird really enjoyed it the next book that I read was a true French classic and that is Notre Dame de Paris by Victor Hugo I read Victor Hugo's Les Miserables back in middle school like late middle school early high school and I really enjoyed it so I've actually had Notre Dame de Paris on my TBR since last summer it was my longest standing TBR book and I finally read it and I ended up really really enjoying it I obviously have some sticky tabs um weirdly enough I have never actually seen like the Disney movie or anything of this but for some reason I knew the story of this really really well like everything that happened I was like yeah I, I know this it's one of those stories that I feel like is just so ingrained in like culture like western culture that you know it whether you know it or not <laughs> because basically in this book we follow a bunch of mul like a bunch of different characters um we follow this kind of a uh, priest is he a priest or a monk kind of person we follow Quasimodo who is the bell ringer at the Notre Dame 
Um, we follow La Esmeralda, who is a young woman who does street performances with a goat, um, as well as the man who ends up being her husband. Um, we follow a lot of different characters that are all kind of like living in this area around Notre Dame and are all kind of affecting each other and are affected by each other. Um, this book was an amazing like tour of Notre Dame in the 1400s because this was written in the 1800s but it actually takes place in the 1400s so, which I found really really interesting but um I just came out of a Victorian literature class where we were fo focusing on the gothic which is a genre that is defined by architecture and this focuses so much on our ar ar architecture I actually ended up emailing my professor being like hey I don't know if you read Notre Dame de Paris recently but this book literally has everything we talked about in class if you wanted to use it and he was like oh my god I totally forgot about that entire section of the book like there's an entire book in here it's book three that literally just takes you through the Notre Dame de Paris and just goes through everything like a bird's eye view of Paris it goes through all of the different parts of the church all of that kind of stuff it was fascinating um and also the story was really it was really interesting because I want to call it fast paced although a lot of like nothing kind of happened for a while we were just kind of learning the environment and the characters and kind of their different stories for quite a while there obviously we get a lot about Quasimodo and his backstory and kind of how he was left on a church uh, I think it was the church doorstep and this monk took him in and everything and then we have La Esmeralda who is like simultaneously looking for a man but also for her family and she has like this necklace that she is very superstitious of and says like um if she like loses her virtue like this necklace won't work to find her family again but then also she gets married to this man who is gonna get hung if he didn't get married to one of th their people she also has a goat which I love <laughs> a very mysterious goat this is also a really interesting look at witches in Europe which I thought was so cool. I took a history of witches class. It sounds like an awesome class, one of my worst classes of undergrad, but I learned a lot from that. And this has so much about witches in Europe. I thought it was fantastic because they think La Esmeralda is a witch. Um, and yeah, and then we obviously get to kind of the part where that I feel like a lot of people know and like see that image from the Disney movie of like Quasimodo saving Esmeralda and having this kind of romance-ish type thing between them. It was beautiful. I The ending has some amazing passages that I was like tearing up at. I thought it was so fantastic. Um, there are so many different allusions that two other books like that came after it like that took stuff from this book which we, funniest one that I found was when that man was um, going to be hung. What was his name? Gr we already said I don't know how to pronounce French but Gringoire? Grinoire? Grinoire? Yeah, sorry. Um, but when he's gonna be hung, one of the things that they said, they were like, you can like do this different like kind of like trials to get out of being hung or you can marry someone. And one of them was like having to take a bell off of a person without the bell jingling. And I'm like, that's Naruto. <laughs> like, what the heck? I, it, there were just so many moments like that that I was like, wait a second. I've seen this before. And again, it's just become one of those stories that's so ingrained in our like culture and so many books that you read that you don't even realize it's from this book. But it was fantastic. I loved the ending. It was so good. It was so tragic, but so beautiful the honestly even like before it kind of got fast paced it was so interesting reading about all of these different characters and their lives and I ended up really really enjoying this I get, get I think I gave it about a four and a half out of five star um again there were just a, those couple of moments that it was pretty slow and boring and I was waiting for it to speed up but the moments that were good were amazing and I really really enjoyed them. I also find Victor Hugo to be incredibly accessible. Like I said, I read Les Miserables back in I believe 8th grade and it was very easy to read and I don't know why I was expecting Notre Dame de Paris to be like difficult but 
it was just as easy as Lehman's Arab to read. He's a very accessible author. Like he doesn't use big words just to use big words. He doesn't go on long rambly like passages like Dickens that just like is like where are you going with this buddy? Um, he, everything he does is very precise and very concise and just very easy to read and digest. So I actually really really enjoyed this and found it very very easy to read. This is like 500 pages. I read it very very quickly so I really do recommend this one also as kind of a way to kind of get into classics because a lot of people keep asking me how like what do I recommend to start. Um, I found this one really really accessible to read so this might be a good place to start especially if you're interested in France. It has those again beautiful descriptions of France and beautiful descriptions of the Notre Dame so this one was great. I actually am really interested in watching the Disney movie now. My boyfriend just renewed Disney Plus so maybe I'll make him watch that movie with me. But uh yeah this was actually really great. Really really enjoyed it. And now the book that you guys have all been waiting for me to talk about because I kept posting about it on Instagram and I've talked about quite a few in quite a few currently reading videos. This one took me about a week and a half to read because it's a chunky one and that is Bleak House by Charles Dickens. There are all my tabs. Not as many as you might think this book would have but I was trying to be like I was trying not to annotate like literally every single page but Charles Dickens Bleak House this is like his absolute masterpiece giant like thing that everyone I feel like this is one of those books that like people look to as like a goal and I was like we're just getting it out of the way at the very beginning. <laughs> Dickens and I have quite a little bit of history together. I have really really loved a couple of his things and really disliked one of his things so it's kind of like was that an offshoot of like something I didn't like or like did I just kind of like the classics because I really loved uh, Christmas Carol and Great Expectations but I really disliked Char um Oliver Twist. I'm with a Charlie Twist. <laughs> Oliver Twist. Um, so I was really interested to see whether or not I would like Bleak House. And spoiler alert, I actually ended up really really enjoying it. I think I gave this about a 4.25 out of 5 star. I really wanted to be able to give it that full 5 star but I just couldn't. It's just too long. It's so unnecessarily long. Like if you want if you for some reason need examples of Dickens going on for way too long like here you go like this entire book is just him rambling on for too long like I know he's so known for that in all of his books but this one seems particularly bad um this book is it follows quite a few different characters and a, quite a few different plot lines that some of them come together but not all of them which I actually found really interesting because I kept kind of sitting there waiting for all of them to kind of come together they definitely all do meet but they don't all necessarily influence each other um, and it's also a lot about kind of life in London at this time period in the 1800s. But our main kind of narrative, we follow a young girl named Esther who lived her childhood with this woman that she called her godmother. And when her godmother dies, she goes off to be kind of a governess teacher at this school. And at this school, a couple years later, she is contacted by this very rich man who is taking her on as a ward because she is an orphan. Since her godmother died, she doesn't know who her family is and all of that. So she is taken in as a ward to Mr. Jarndyce. I think is how you say it and he has taken on two other wards Richard and Ada. So Esther, Richard and Ada are kind of just their lives are all brought together and they kind of continue on this story all together. Esther and Ada are lesbians a hundred percent. I don't care what people say. They are in love with each other. All of the pink tabs if you can see that are them being gay. <laughs> like I loved it like I know like they're not actually can canonically lesbians but they're pretty fucking gay <laughs> like you can read this as pretty gay. Um, basically Ada and Esther like Esther is kind of taken on as a companion for Ada because I think Ada and Richard really are related to Jarndyce in some way or they're they're definitely cousins. I think they're related to Jarndyce too. Like I think they're cousins um, and Esther isn't related to anyone so she's kind of taken on as a companion for Ada who is the youngest um, and yeah they're so fucking gay. They are so gay. They kiss more than anyone else in this book. <laughs> 
and we follow their lives together and a lot of those three exploring London and again looking at kind of the everyday life of someone living in London and all of the kind of different nooks and crannies of um 18 hundreds London. Um, we also follow Mr. George who is a veteran who his story kind of connects to theirs but not really. His is pretty separate. We also follow the Jelly Buys um, and Caddy Jelly Buy who I'm not gonna lie like there was if there's a relationship I was the most invested in it was Caddy and Prince. I love them. Prince was this man who freaking like taught dance and I was in love with him too. <laughs> At the core, this is a book about inheritance, basically, and finding Esther's mother. Those are, say, are the two big plot points. Basically, those take 500 pages. I think I tweeted out or posted somewhere that I was literally, it is literally 500 and 12 pages into this book that the synopsis finally starts because the synopsis talks a lot about how yeah it's literally 513 pages in um the synopsis talks a lot about how esther becomes like very deformed and like it's a lot about like finding love and finding acceptance when she's so deformed and everything and i was like this girl is fine they keep talking about how pretty she is um she finally gets sick at 513 pages that makes her deformed and um that's also when about the kind of inheritance drama starts so it's literally about 500 pages of like other stuff happening and then the plot finally starts um but i again i really did really really enjoy a lot of these characters they are so distinct and so interesting like all of them um there are definitely a couple that i didn't really like like i didn't really enjoy the chapters from mr guppy's point of view i wasn't a huge fan of him um and then at the end oh there's so much at the end that happens first off um it's not the end it's a uh, i think somewhere in like the 400s or so oh yes 479 um we have a man die of spontaneous combustion which is amazing let me just put that out there best way to die um that was a mr guppy chapter and that was the only thing i liked from a mr guppy chapter was um we have a man who just fucking spontaneously combusts and i'm like thank you thank you dickens for writing that <laughs> but then at the end we have a kind of murder mystery we have a like big kind of climax reveal stuff and like different things happening with all of the different characters it was really really like worth it for the end the ending was a lot of fun um but also like the rest of it i just found that i really enjoyed just this quiet reading experience i don't like to like I don't want to compare this to Japanese literature because I do that way too often but something I really enjoy about Japanese lit is that I always say is that it's very quiet it's very quaint there's not like a million things happening there's not like plot twists at every turn and da -da 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 that happens a lot in western literature and this is kind of the same in the sense that it's just a very quiet book like you just kind of follow these characters on their day to day for quite a while and I honestly just really enjoyed that I thought it was really really interesting just like looking at Victorian London I thought it was really really cool um I think a lot of other people are, would get really really frustrated with that I think this book is worth it if you have a lot of patience but um probably would get pretty annoying if not <laughs> but I ended up really enjoying this again I do like Charles Dickens writing style a lot and I do enjoy his books but this one was just way too long like it could have been cut down by like 300 pages if he just stopped rambling so that is why I had to dock it a little bit in my kind of overall star rating but I did really really enjoy this I do think it is a fun Dickens um do I recommend it for everyone no but if you're interested definitely check it out. There's a lot happening in this book. There's a lot of good in it. It's just a little bit too long. <laughs> but yes, those are the three books that I read at the beginning of May that were classics um, that I wanted to review for you guys. You guys will definitely be getting another one in a couple of weeks as I've already finished like a book and a half like a classic and a half so you guys will probably be getting another one in a little bit but I hope you guys all enjoyed these three classic reviews. But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!